Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be talking about our beautiful clouds and our beautiful planet Earth, but specifically we're actually going to be talking about the science of reflectivity known as the albedo effect. Today you're going to learn something about albedo you may have not known, and well, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So what exactly is albedo? Albedo is actually pretty simple to describe because it's essentially kind of like what a mirror does. It reflects light from the surface of something. Right now, the uh, albedo of our planet Earth, at least in this simulation, is about 32% or 0.32. If I were to decrease albedo, making it like close to zero, let's just make it zero. This means that no light is reflected from our planet. It's all absorbed. And obviously the surface temperature of our planet will start rising dramatically. If however I turn it into 100%, all of the light is reflected from the planet. And as you can imagine, with time, the temperature will start falling and probably get to the freezing point relatively quick. So if you look around our solar system, you'll find all sorts of objects with all sorts of albedo. Venus actually has some of the highest albedo in our solar system. It's at 88%. So Venus reflects about 88% of sunlight from the surface. And uh, because of this, it actually is a lot cooler than it would have been otherwise. The temperature on Venus is 476 degrees Celsius, and it could have been much higher if the albedo was higher. And then there are some uh, rocks out there, specifically some asteroids, that have albedo that's very, very low, up to about 4%, or down to about 4%. And uh, we're not going to look for those specifically because they're not as crucial to our discussion right now. Our discussion is going to be about albedo on our planet Earth and specifically albedo related to clouds. I'm going to restart the simulation for a second. And basically we're going to take a look at the planet from sort of this perspective. And there's actually quite a lot of papers out there that describe the albedo due to clouds and due to snow because Clouds and snow are very reflective. As a matter of fact, the reflectivity of snow is 80 to 90% and um, ice on oceans is about 70%. So essentially, it's very, very close to what Venus has. On the other hand, water, and specifically this water right here, and also even the forests, don't reflect much uh, light. So uh, open water has reflectivity of about... 6% and forests have reflectivity of about 8%. So this absorbs a lot of sunlight, this absorbs a lot of sunlight, this reflects a lot of sunlight, and as does this. And as you can imagine, removing ice shelves or removing uh, basically polar caps and uh, any kind of other ice deposits from our planet will increase the, sorry, will decrease the albedo, increase the. Um, amount of sunlight that hits the Earth and obviously increase the overall temperature. This is why uh, a lot of the scientists that uh, have been discussing global warming in the last few years talked about how the, the more ice we lose, the more likely our planet will actually start warming up even faster. But once again, this is not a topic for this video. We're still only going to be focusing on clouds. Now, in the last few years, um, scientists actually started the formation of clouds and they realized something really incredible. Turns out that one third of all of the cloud cover on our surface, or basically on our planet, is essentially life made. Life is responsible for creating a third of all of the clouds. And the way it's made is actually pretty cool. Basically, things like fungi, things like little particles of bacteria, they kind of go around the atmosphere floating around everywhere. And what they do is they start off as the uh, particles that are responsible for the creation of these clouds. Now, not all clouds are made this way, but all clouds require some sort of a particle to be formed. Now, usually these are sand particles or particles from like dust, uh, so they're not really organic. But it turns out that the third of all the clouds is made by not only organic matter, but matter that is life. So before there was life, or if there is no life on the planet, there is actually going to be less clouds. 
and thus there's going to be uh, less albedo and thus there's going to be more temperature. So let's just demonstrate this. So let's uh, let's go in here and uh, let's just do maybe a little bit of math and basically we're going to try to calculate how much albedo there would be if there was no life on our planet and if the clouds were basically two-thirds of what we have now. So we know that the surface of Earth without the clouds and without the ice shelves has albedo of about maybe 8%, 0 0.08. Uh, on the other hand, with the clouds, the total albedo is about 0.33 and the albedo of clouds and ice shelves is about 70%. So that means that somewhere roughly around maybe 0.24 or even 0.23 albedo. In other words, reflectivity will suddenly become a lot less prominent. And as you can see, the temperature at this reflectivity actually rises quite dramatically. This is because now we have less clouds on our surface. And because we have the last clouds, more light, a, a huge amount of more light reaches the surface and the temperature jumps from, it was, I think it was 16 degrees Celsius to, let's see how high it goes actually. And uh, this is uh, what would have happened if, well, if there was no life on our planet or I guess if there was no more bacteria and fungi in the atmosphere creating uh, a variety of clouds. And it's not just fungi, it's not just bacteria, it's actually probably a lot of other uh, types of smaller life particles that we are not even familiar with because it's a very recent research uh, but one day we'll discover what it is and basically the more of these types of fungi and the more of these bacteria we have in our atmosphere the more clouds will be formed which is actually pretty cool but as you can see the temperature is increasing quite dramatically we're, we're already about 10 degrees higher than we were only a few moments ago so not having as many clouds on the surface of Earth is actually a big deal. Now, this also gives you an idea that back in the days when there was no life on our planet, uh, the temperature was actually probably much higher as well, because especially when there was no terrestrial life and no life floating around in the atmosphere, there were probably not as many clouds, a lot more water vapor, much, much higher uh, greenhouse gas effect, and thus the temperature was a lot higher. But as soon as the uh, trees became a thing, pollen started to appear in the atmosphere and all kinds of fungi started to fly around the atmosphere as well. That's when we started having more clouds. And that's of course when the actual albedo effect kicked in and, and became uh, a lot higher on, our sur on the surface of our planet. Now, so the average seems to be around 25 degrees Celsius, which is literally 10 degrees higher than it was before. And 10 degrees is, is a huge, huge difference. This, of course, would melt the ice caps completely and thus lower this even more. So this would probably become like 0.13. And at that point, Earth would actually start warming up pretty quickly. So if I were to make this 0.13, and this is without the ice caps, you would see that suddenly, boom, it actually goes up even more. And the, at this point, planet becomes too toasty for human life and probably would become relatively difficult to live on because the average temperature here is about 20 degrees higher than it used to be. So all in all, this kind of gives you an idea that um, there is a lot of things we still don't know about our beautiful planet Earth. One of those things is, is of course, how clouds actually form and what sort of uh, responsibility life actually has for creating these beautiful clouds that you see floating around pretty much everywhere and probably ignore them most of the time. But in reality, life has so much influence on the atmosphere on our planet that it's actually kind of impossible to ignore. And because of all of these little factors, the actual atmosphere and the actual climate and the temperature on our planet depends on so many different factors that we have to be really careful with what we do to our planet. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. And I just wanted to talk about albedo and the clouds and give you an idea of what can happen if there is some kind of a change in the atmosphere and the life from the atmosphere disappears completely. Our planet would definitely become a little bit warmer. Anyway, thank you for watching. Let's finish this video by creating a beautiful explosion out of a beautiful planet Earth and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.